Hi everyone, welcome to Gallant IAS. This is Let's Go 120 Plus in Prelims 2021 series. Here we will see uh, some of the questions which will be helpful for you in your upcoming Prelims 2021. Uh, we will be also solving uh, the model questions through some elimination techniques as well as this will be a platform where you can revise your basic concepts at the same time. So uh, let's move on to the questions. Two questions we will be discussing today from the topic of environment. So the first question is consider the following statements. Ammonia is an odorless gas and is used as an industrial chemical in the production of fertilizers, plastics, synthetic fibers, dyes and other products. The acceptable maximum limit of ammonia in drinking water as per the Bureau of Indian Standards is 0.5 ppm. In humans, long term ingestion of water having ammonia levels of 1 ppm or above may cause damage to internal organs. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? See, with regard to ammonia pollution, it was with regard to ammonia pollution, it was there in the uh, news mainly because the high levels of ammonia like 3 ppm and above it was observed in or it was found high levels of ammonia uh, was found in the Yamuna waters. So uh, in that aspect this was coming uh, in news recurrently. Okay. Now uh, you know ammonia it occurs naturally in the environment from the breakdown of organic waste matter. And see in this particular question if you look statements 2 and 3. They are a bit factual, okay, factual in the sense, in the second statement it is uh, talking about the permissible levels of uh, ammonia in drinking water, okay. So if you don't know about the permissible level of ammonia in drinking water, then you will not be uh, in a position to say whether the second statement is right or not. Now moving on to the third statement, there are also a factual uh, content is there with regard to uh, like uh, levels of 1 ppm or above may cause damage to internal organs. So if you are not aware about how much is the permissible level uh, of ammonia for us to intake or how um, above how much levels of ammonia will cause damage to our internal organs then also you cannot um, say whether the third statement is right or not. So leave that second and third statements. Move on to the first statement. What does first statement say? First statement says, Ammonia is an odorless gas and is used as an industrial chemical in the production of fertilizers, plastics, synthetic fibers, dyes and other products. If you uh, read the first statement in just one go, then you will be feeling that the first statement is right. Yes, it is used in the production of fertilizers, plastics, synthetic fibers, dyes and other products. But see, if uh, the word, if you miss out the word orderless there, then definitely you think that the first statement is right. The second part of the first statement is right. Yes, it is used in the production of fertilizers uh, or in the synthetic fibers, uh, plastics, all these things it is being used. But it is not orderless. Right from our school days, uh, ammonia is something that is familiar to us, that uh, we have studied about it even in our school days. So there we have studied that ammonia has got a very pungent odor or it has got a very choking smell. Okay, it has got a pungent odor. It has got a pungent odor, a very choking smell. Uh, and you know, it is used in uh, cleaning solvents and it is even a constituent of urea. So you can, just applying common sense, you can say that ammonia will uh, have some order okay it, it has got a very pungent uh, choking smell which is similar to sweat or urine you can see so uh, if you know that very basic fact about ammonia that it has got an order it has got a pungent smell then definitely you uh, say that first statement is wrong so if first statement is wrong what happens you can eliminate option a option c and option d you are left out with option B. Even if you are not in a position to say whether the facts relating statement 2 and 3 are right or not, uh, di directly you can hit the answer which is option B, 2 and 3 by the elimination strategy. So uh, this is how the uh, basic concepts so or the things that you have learned or things that you are familiar with even uh, right from your school days that uh, simple logic you can apply in your questions. 
see with regard to ammonia another thing that you have to note down is ammonia has got a connection with the biological oxygen demand as well okay it has got a connection with the uh, pod see ammonia when present in water uh, it reduces the amount of dissolved oxygen present in water why because ammonia is being oxidized though it is being converted to other forms of nitrogen so what happens the level of oxygen in water reduces so what happens when amount of dissolved oxygen in water reduces the biological oxygen demand increases okay or BOD increases so the connection with BOD and ammonia you have to take a note of okay so here your answer will be option B 2 and 3 only by which even if you are not aware about the second and third statements you have come to know that uh, the second and third statements are right that is the acceptable maximum limit of ammonia uh, in drinking water as per BIS is 0.5 ppm and in humans if long term ingestion of water having ammonia levels of greater than 1 ppm uh, then it is causing severe damages to the internal organs that is also a right statement so statements 2 and 3 are correct in this context which means your answer turns out to be option b 2 and 3 only now let's move on to another question yes with reference to paki tiger reserve consider the following statements so the question is with regard to paki tiger reserve statement 1 says paki tiger reserve is famous for hornbill species Second statement says it falls within the Western Himalayan biodiversity hotspot. See, here uh, just imagine that you are not in a position to say whether Pake Tiger Reserve is famous for hornbill species or not. You don't know that. And also the second statement, you don't know whether it is situated in Western Himalayan biodiversity or not. Biodiversity hotspot or not. But we will solve this question just by... Uh, recollecting the facts that we have learned by solving the previous year question. See, Pake uh, Wildlife Sanctuary was a previous year question. Its location was a previous year question, like a 2018 previous year question. So, if you have solved that previous year question, by this time, see, prelims is very near. So, by this time, you might have solved the previous year questions at least uh, two or three times. So, here, uh, if you can recollect that fact that Pake Wildlife Sanctuary is located in Yes, in Arunachal Pradesh, which you have uh, studied or which you have taken into your mind just by solving the previous year question. Now, if Pake Tiger Reserve is in Arunachal Pradesh, how can the second statement be right? Second statement says it falls within the Western Himalayan Biodiversity Hotspot. Okay, you know Arunachal Pradesh, it is in the northeastern part of India. And you, ha you have figured out that Pake Tiger Reserve, yes, it is situated in Arunachal Pradesh from the previous year question solving knowledge. So, second statement here, it is contradictory. So, if first statement, Pake Tiger Reserve is in Arunachal Pradesh, then second statement, it says it falls within the Western, Western Himalayan Biodiversity Hotspot. Then second statement here, it is wrong. Okay. It is contradictory. That is, both cannot be true at the same time, which means you can eliminate option C, both 1 and 2. Both cannot be correct at the same time. If Pake Tiger Reserve is located in Arunachal Pradesh. Now, the first statement itself says it is famous for hornbill species. Okay, you are also not uh, sure whether Pake Tiger Reserve is famous for hornbill species or not. But see, hornbill species was also a previous year question. And uh, if you have solved that previous year question, definitely you might have learned or you might have uh, come across certain facts with regard to hornbill species, where it is found, um, it is this uh, state bird uh, of which states, okay, it is predominantly found in which part of our country. All these facts you might have come across if you have solved that particular previous year question. So, with regard to hornbill species, it's natural, about its natural habitat was asked uh, in that previous year question. It is naturally found in western guts as well as see it is uh, highest diversity of this particular hornbill species. It is found in the northeastern uh, part of India. Uh, India is home to approximately 9 species of hornbill and its highest diversity you can see in the northeastern part of India. And... Uh, See, hornbill, it is the state bird of Arunachal Pradesh. 
and Kerala. So if you have solved that particular question with regard to Hornbill, then you have, uh, then you might have come across different facts with regard to Hornbill, like where it is found, where it is predominantly found, where it is naturally occurring. Uh, it is the state bird of which all states where Hornbill Festival is celebrated. Hornbill Festival is celebrated in Nagaland. Okay, so you might have come across all these facts. So connecting those facts, you can see see that Pakke Tiger Reserve is in Arunachal Pradesh. That you have figured out. And now hornbill species. Hornbill species is also, yes, the greatest diversity is found in northeastern part of India. So what happens? Yes, definitely you can uh, relate both these. Okay, it is the uh, state bird of Arunachal Pradesh. At the same time, uh, the hornbill festival, it is celebrated in Nagaland. So connecting these facts, you can say that yes, Pagge Tiger Reserve, which is also situated in Arunachal Pradesh, it can be famous for hornbill species naturally. Okay, so you can uh, come to the conclusion that first statement is right here. So what happens when first statement is right? Automatically second statement gets wrong. So here your answer will be option A, one only. Okay, the second statement is wrong here. It is not the western Himalayas, it is the eastern Himalayas. So here the answer is option A, one only. So this is how you can solve the question just by knowing some facts that you have come across while solving the previous year questions. Okay, while you solve the previous year questions, you are just, uh, you are not just solving, you are not just solving the question to uh, just see which is the answer. When you find uh, the answer, you are also going with, uh, going with the related facts of that particular answer. Okay. If you are uh, solving the previous year question in such a manner, then definitely you can uh, attempt other questions. Okay, so uh, that's it for today. See you soon with some other uh, questions where you can apply similar techniques and logic uh, in the coming sessions. Okay, thank you.